No, oh, no, we're not doing it again, Kate. Again? If you carry on like this, you're going to have me taken off here. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're looking at the most embarrassing gaffes and blunders on live TV. Sorry, can't this do is this. Absolutely diabolical behaviour. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Adam and Ian. Um, I called Adam Woodjet by his real name rather than by his character name. You know something's going to go wrong when the soaps broadcast live episodes, which they only do on special occasions. Some of them go off without a hitch, like the bombastic Cory tram crash episode. I couldn't miss your big day, could I? Even if it does mean bumping into the bold ginger one. <laughs> How's Adam? Other times, errors abound, like this notorious incident where Joe Joyner, aka Tanya, accidentally said, How's Adam? instead of How's Ian. She was referring to actor Adam Woodyatt, who plays Ian Beale. The look of horror on her face says it all. Yeah. But, uh, no, it was, um, it, I'm over it now, but it was it was horrendous the next day. It night, doesn't matter. Uh, and obviously... Knowing that millions of people were, were actually Aww. tuning in. We, we... There are many more live soap bloopers, too that all looked very embarrassing for the cast, like Loria Brett having to stop herself from laughing hysterically that same episode. I don't know, Jeff. We're up to Fratton Park where there's been a red card, but for who, Chris Kamara? I don't know, Jeff, has it? I must have missed that. Red cards are always major incidents, so it was baffling when Chris Kamara missed Anthony van den Boer receiving one in this edition of Soccer Saturday. But this fail was far more embarrassing for the match officials rather than Kamara himself, who was doing his best in difficult weather conditions. <laughs> Chris, have you not been watching? I haven't. I don't know where that's come from, Chris. I have no idea what has happened there. Because of the rain, Kamara wasn't allowed near enough to the pitch by health and safety, which made it difficult to see that Van den Boer had been sent off as opposed to being substituted. No, you're right. I saw him go off, but I thought they were bringing a sub on, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> it was extremely chaotic though and has become one of the most legendary moments in Premier League history and Kamara still hasn't lived it down. Hey, what's happened Chris? <laughs> uh, I don't know Jeff. <laughs> Rick's Dish. Bizarre things sometimes happen on Saturday Kitchen, like this hilarious blooper Jeff Martin delivered live. Delicious looking dick from. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Viewers were watching a clip of a roast dinner with some very appetizing pork and potatoes when the show went back to Martin live in the studio, who fumbled his words a bit too much. Delicious looking uh, dish from Rick there, pork, yeah. Uh, this week's masterclass is something. That, uh... It wasn't the most profane gaffe we've ever heard, thankfully, but it did break everybody else with Jeff in the studio that day. We can't blame them, though we wonder how Rick Stein felt about his recipe being overshadowed by Jeff Martin getting his tongue tied. I do apologize for that, so what we're going to do now? Nadine Dorries. As, as you were, Sunak stability extends to the cabinet with the big beefsteak and all the. Uh, Cage has got Bradman back at home in the home office. Sorry, I've just completely messed up. She's humiliated herself in so many ways over the years. It's difficult to pick just one. There was her TikTok rap, her I'm a celeb stint, her notoriously awful books, and her various absurd interviews. I'd like to know. Um, uh, aren't we've we've communicated. Two classic Dory's gaffes include her interview with Charlie State on BBC Breakfast, where she was suspiciously vague about her conversations with Boris Johnson, and her presenting gig on Talk TV. The former made her look completely ridiculous and made you wonder why the Tories had chosen Dory's on TV that day, unless she'd gone rogue, of course. Have you spoken to the Prime Minister recently in the last 24 hours? Why? Why are you asking me that question? In the latter, she speaks incomprehensible gibberish while struggling to read the auto cue. Do you know what she said? We've no idea. They're in our studio and we've risked them for a clue. Stick around for Just Stop Oil Live. Eurovision 2023. When you said you were leaving, 
Our 2021 entry into Eurovision infamously got nil poir, but James Newman was doomed from the beginning. In 2023, we were hosting and had come second the previous year, so hopes were high. Though the actual event was one of the best contests in recent memory, the UK's performance unfortunately left much to be desired. May Muller's song was popular enough at home, at least relative to other Eurovision entries of years past, but she was blighted with technical issues. Instead, I wrote a song about how the main problem was that her vocals were hard to hear over the loud backing music, with people even blaming the BBC of sabotaging Muller. It was embarrassing for the country and the broadcaster to see us sink so low after Spaceman. Instead, I wrote a song. Wrong winner. Now the public have spoken. Hush, children. More Eurovision? In 2007, the BBC was taking its entry very seriously, holding a competition with a public vote at the end called Making Your Mind Up. One, two, three, Cindy! Scooch ended up going to Helsinki that year, netting us a whopping 19 points. So close to beating Serbia's 268. But it was nearly somebody else if Terry Wogan was to be believed. Accompanied by Fern Cotton, the show was a shambles, with myriad errors where Wogan didn't seem to know what was going on. It's Scooch! Oh, wait, it is Scooch! It's Scooch! He was all over the place, even appearing to make a pass at Fern early on in the show, much to her shock. I rub some goose grease into um, your chest. I think I'm all right. <laughs> Thank you. Piers walks out. Though he remains popular with lots of people, it's hard to deny that Piers Morgan has made a name for himself by being humiliated. And I understand that you don't like Meghan Markle. You've made it so clear a number of times. He started off his television career by being rinsed by Ian Hislop on Have I Got News For You? But when he fronted GMB, things got much sillier. He made a fool of himself by theatrically spitting out a Greg's vegan sausage roll, much to Susanna Reid's disdain. Oh, God. I like them. They've got nice crisp oh. pastry. Yeah. The vegetarian sausage is nicely flavoured. But he was at his worst when he stormed off the show after being called out by Alex Beresford for banging on about Meghan Markle again, saying that GMB was his show and that Beresford had no right to criticise him. OK, I'm done with this. No, no, no. Sorry. No, oh, sorry. So, do you know what? That's pathetic. You can track him, maybe not my no, own no, no. Show. X Factor Fix. OK, Rita, over to who are you sending home and why? During its controversial lifetime, The X Factor was constantly plagued by stories that it had been fixed. The show wasn't helped by numerous genuine phone-in and televoting scandals in the UK, in which millions of Brits really were defrauded. We've just heard Monica and Anton sing, and now we'll ask each judge who they want to send home tonight. But in 2015, Ollie Mears accidentally announced that Monica Michael was going home, only to be hastily corrected by Caroline Flack, who said they were actually going to deadlock. Unfortunately, Monica, you are going home, I'm afraid. So, Anton. What? No, Ollie, no? she's not. No. Oh, she's not going to break. No, we're sorry. Going to deadlock. Okay, sorry, we're going I got that wrong. Sorry, my fault. Sorry. Apologize for that. Sorry, Monica. Monica later lost the sing off and did go home at the end of the show. Miss was slammed, with many claiming that his slip up was proof that the show was a fix and that the vote didn't matter. Prank calls. It's beyond us how this was allowed to happen not just once, but three times in one day, by the same bloke ringing up repeatedly to give his opinion on a range of issues. It's happened. Uh, not necessarily shining movements in the world, but a lot more American male, American male. I'm struggling to make a word out of that. Yeah. Every single time, he began to say what he thinks and then changed gears to call his ex-wife offensive names live on TV. Apparently, he's a regular caller and calls every day repeatedly, doing a range of different accents to fool the producers. Morning, Matthew. Morning. Uh, in, in principle, are you for or against minimum price? 
I'm against it. Like I'm against what Shannon Goodmate's been saying, the stupid b When he gets through, he uses the opportunity to mock his ex, who apparently watches the show. Although, we'd imagine she's since stopped watching it to avoid hearing exactly this. I, I apologize once again to, to this poor woman that's uh, constantly being harassed by this man. Schofield's List. Well, these are extremely serious allegations, and that's why the government has moved so quickly to try and get to the bottom of exactly what they are. Who was this most humiliating for? Philip Schofield, David Cameron, or the ITV itself? The whole incident was baffling, where Schofield took it upon himself to do some Googling and compile a list of potential nonces, then presented it to the Prime Minister on live TV. It because takes otherwise, a momentary yes. cursory glance at the internet. It took me about yeah. three minutes last night to continually find a list of the same names. Though he tried to keep his list hidden from the cameras, this didn't work and numerous names were legible, which ended up with a successful libel case being brought against ITV. I have those names there. Those are the names on a piece of paper. You yeah. know the names on that piece yeah. of paper. Will you be speaking to those people? Cameron stressed the dangers of a witch hunt and there were apologies all round. This particular Schofield moment isn't one that aged well either, given his catastrophic fall from grace back in 2023. Let us know in the comments which celeb you think carried off their failure the best. Oh, dear. Ah, oh, dear. I do apologize. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.